Server Room 17 once again. This is my Last of Us Grounded walkthrough. This is Chapter 4 Pittsburgh. This is a very intense and challenging sequence. So after you crash here, you're going to be assailed by five or six of these raiders, or these hunters, I forget the, the term for them. On Grounded, the enemies stick closer to each other than they did on Survivor Mode. They generally just move around a little bit more capriciously than you remember them. And it makes this very hard. Because they're constantly moving, they're constantly moving close to each other, so the divide and conquer technique is tougher than it would be in a, a larger environment. The part that sucks here is the first bunch of guys are really manageable and really fun. The second bunch that come after you take all these fellas down are not. Because the, the spawn is is midway through this, there is no checkpoint, and it just it pump it bumps it up to eleven. It's just very hard and it's very tense and the pressure is on you because you know you've got to the second spawn. You know there's a hell of a lot of the game to replay when you fail and it makes it one of those tricky sequences. There's no two ways around this. Regardless of how many walkthroughs you watch, this section is all going to be down to the random AI and it's going to be tough regardless. So feel free to use guns. Guns will make this much more manageable but... Um, I've already mentioned in previous videos, so if you're new to this, this walkthrough, I'm trying my best not to shoot. I'm shooting if I have to, and every so often that does happen. Sometimes I'm being very wasteful with my shots, but that's, that's a discussion for a different debate. Also, on these moments here, when a guy's coming up to you like this, you very rarely get the opportunity to stealthily take them down. That right there, I might actually have been able to, but... I'd been bitten too many times by people responding to me, ducking my first attempt, and then punching me. So I ended up doing the loud takedown just then. They heard it, so they're going to be coming to my my position. So I'm going to move over here. And I, I've, I've mentioned this in previous moments, but you can stealth past all of these people, get all the way up to the fence where you go after this fight, but the, the activation on the fence just isn't there. There's literally no way to skip these these sequences. And... If you could, I think it would be significantly better because the people wanting to do these moments and have these crazy intense little, you know, sieges could have that. But also the people looking for a really efficient and, and smart way past this without wasting resources or killing people would be able to do that as well. And as it stands, there is literally only one way of doing this. You kill everything and then you progress. And the worst part which is like the third time I've said that because there's plenty of worse parts of this <laughs> is it can be tough to know where people are you know you don't have the listening mode I had my headphones in for this part I think so I could actually hear my environment because I needed to relying on your eyes on this part and no ears is, is very very tough and even then it can be tricky and it's I, like I, I don't know I how long did this take me? About half an hour, I think, to get this. Which to some people doesn't sound like a long time, but when you bear in mind that it's it's only a couple of minutes long. Like, I think the full thing is maybe about five to seven minutes long, depending on how quickly you take things down. And I'm taking my time, because I'm very tentative and, and afraid. But when you're constantly repeating, you know, after two minutes, after three minutes, after one minute in some cases, it, half an hour can feel like a long time. And especially when it's a really intense sequence like this. Like that right then. I think I, I went to press triangle to grab him, but I, I don't think it registered, so I had to hit him with the bat. Oh, here we go. So you can see it just then, I was really tempted to restart, because I felt like I'd just fucked up. But luckily enough, I had a brick. I do that, it turns them around, and then I can get in here and reposition. So it worked in my favour. But it does seem like it's screaming for a, an environmental hazard to help you through this. Bloody hell, I did not see that guy. So looking back... I might have been able to take him down then. 
And one of the things you find as well, especially in this moment, is just because you have a good opportunity to grab somebody does not mean you have long enough to put them on their ass. Because the amount of times you grab somebody, start choking them, and then you hear that rush of wind noise that tells you some fella's looking at you. Like, look, he would have probably seen me if I'd have took that other guy. And then watch this. Another dude walks into the room as well, so I can't take him. And then they're both on each other. So at this moment in time, it's a complete and utter stalemate. I can't do anything to them, so the only choice I have here is to risk going across the other side of the room to take out the other straggler. And as you can see, I don't really want to do that because I feel like I'm in a good position here. I think I'm in a position where I can, I can do the old, you know, ring around the car technique when you're playing hide and seek as a kid when somebody comes near. It gives me a lot of freedom of movement, but it also means I've got quite a, a no man's land to cover if I want to go and commit to killing someone. And I have, if I had arrows, this would probably be much simpler, but I think I would have tried not to use arrows on this section. Because as much as I'm telling you that this section is hard and that it can be nightmarish and, you know, it can be frustrating and things, there's no denying that this is a really fun fight. And I, and I do believe that if the checkpoint was like it was on Survivor, which is in between the waves, that this would be even better on Grounded. Because grounded makes it trickier, because the AI and things, but it also makes it trickier from a perspective that I don't believe converts to difficulty, which is by removing checkpoints. And a lot of this game on grounded is like Survivor, with a little bit of an AI tweak to make them more arsy in places and more groupy. A bit of a damage increase, less ammunition and loot to pick up more powerful guns and that's it like it's it's survivor with a very slight tweak on all the things survivor did with terrible checkpoints and those che terrible checkpoints are intentional so that right there was me saying fuck it i took a punch and i decided to roll with it cuz it's a tough section this and a few people had asked if I were going to do a no damage run, and I think I could. Because there's only a few parts in the in the guide that I actually do take damage, and that is one of them. And this is one of those sequences where if you set it aside for a day, and you sit down and start playing, you'll eventually get it. Because it's less about skill, and it's more about the AI. It's very luck based. And I say that not to diminish anybody else's ability on this moment. Because... You know, doing this without being injured is a very skillful thing. But I think even the people who have done that would agree that you're just waiting for that one good run. You know, some games, it's all about the player. Like, there's still elements of, of RNG and luck, but you can almost dictate how the fight's going to work every time. Like, a good example of this would be probably Bayonetta. When I was doing my pure platinum run on that game... I got to the point where I knew things so much and I knew exactly how the fights would go down that I knew what the bosses and, and, and certain enemies were going to do before they did them. Especially the bosses. The enemies can still surprise you, but the bosses only have so many techniques and they generally have such a big wind-up and big telegraph on those techniques that it becomes really simple to, to, to beat them once you know what you're doing. So I would never go into a fight on Bayonetta having had that experience expecting right. to get unlucky with a bullshit technique as opposed to a game like Dark Souls where the AI on those games is so random at times that they'll do things you've never seen them do before like they'll do two moves in a row that they've never done together ever in your entire history of playing that game and it's just that difference in, in the RNGs and things and I think The Last of Us AI is, is a perfect example of that. In those instances where the, the spawns are kind of random and the, the paths are kind of random because it's just them reacting and scanning the area, you cannot predict it. You just have to roll with it and it can be tough as balls. Unlike this, this area right now, super simple because every single guy in it has a path. The only time he'll deviate from that path is if he sees you or if you make noise. So I know... If I mess this up, I can walk the path you're seeing right now 
without any fear of being seen because there will never be anybody on it unless I've done something previously to this that has somehow changed the way the enemies are. But I know now they're all in conversations, they're all on the preset path. When I get to the top of these stairs, there'll be one guy in front of me walking away from me, there'll be one guy to my left walking where I need to go, and all I need to do here is distract the guy on the left with a bottle so that the guy on the right doesn't respond as well. So what I do here is I throw the bottle to, do, to distract the guy on the right, I come over here, I think there's something to throw to distract this fella. Or maybe there isn't, maybe I just... Oh, there you go. So I throw a bottle, I thought I threw it over here, my bad. I distract that other fella, he walks that way, and I walk past him. And as soon as I get out of this window, I am past that sequence. It takes, what, 30 seconds? It looks like a really intimidating room, really challenging, but there's a fantastic stealth route through it. In fact, there's probably several really good stealth routes through that room. And that, to me, is The Last of Us at its finest. Because you can choose to take everybody down if you want to, or you can just do that. Same with this. This is another fantastic area. So this was seen on the very first E3 demo for The Last of Us. And if you go back and watch it, it's a vastly different looking game. Some of the elements are very similar. Some of them have held true, but it's still... It's not the game that came out. It's it's still that kind of raw demo, you know... Um, they, they make it almost cinematic-y. Which I understand, because they want to get you excited and they want to sell you on the concept of what you're watching. And I think that can hurt games. And I was going to do a, a little discussion about this, but I'll probably just use this video for it. And I was thinking to myself, when a game has a pretty long dev cycle and you're seeing countless promotional pieces for that game, does it hurt the game? Because I'm starting to think it does. And on the surface, I look at it like this. The more they can advertise a game, the better it should do. That is a fundamental nature of marketing. The more you can have complete audience saturation with a concept or idea, the more people will associate with it and subconsciously pick it up, spread it, and you know absorb it into their daily rituals and their daily lives. But at the same time, the more you see something, the more you kind of get disenfranchised from it. And I was thinking of Watch Dogs. I was so excited for Watch Dogs when I saw that E3 reveal. I thought it looked amazing. I thought it was super cool, such a great idea, and I couldn't wait for it. Watch Dogs took forever to come out, and all we saw was the same stuff they pushed to E3, that same kind of concept of the dude on the street doing a mission. And they forced it everywhere, all the time. And it got to the point where, by the time it came out, I was so over that game before I'd even played it, just because of how... It had been in development for a long time, and everything they'd shown about it was so ubiquitous and everywhere that I just didn't care. And I think it heavily affected my reception of that game. And I played Watch Dogs, and I think it's pretty damn average. I don't think there's anything that spectacular about it at all. But that's just me. And I was thinking about The Division. Like, The Division looked so cool in that opening... And then they've shown another thing that was very similar that hasn't really elaborated on much. And the more I see of it, the more I fear it's going to be the same thing that Watch Dogs was. This super cool looking, interesting idea that when you finally get your hands on it, you just don't give a fuck because it's been too long. And at some point, it makes me wonder, maybe there is a quality to brevity and to the mystery of games coming out that we're kind of losing now that there's this intense coverage from almost every angle. Well, what do you guys think about that? Because I, I understand the need for it, and I understand that more is better. And in some circumstances, more is better has definitely made it more exciting experience for me. Yeah, hell, I build hype for games I'm excited about. But at the same time, are we kind of shooting ourselves in the foot? It's, it's one of those strange things. I'd be curious to see what people think. But here we go. This... <laughs> God damn this part. So... My original strategy here was to kill the first two stalkers with bricks and bottles to save bow arrows and then finish the rest of them off with the bow because I couldn't fight them because they kept on getting the first punch regardless of what I did, the goddamn asshole boxing champions. And in the end, I ended up getting this. And the big problem here is you have to kill these four stalkers. The stalkers don't want to come in the room, so you have to use yourself as bait. I tried to move the camera away because it seems to make them run at me a little bit more than they normally would. 
Word to the wise here, sometimes when you hit them with a brick and then you hit them with your melee weapon, it will not kill them instantly. Every so often you have to finish them off with another two hits, which I just do not understand. I don't get the crit modifier or what's happening behind the scenes. And then there's this part. When you pull this, there is a random chance a stalker will grab you on your way up the corridor. There is a random chance a bloater will cock block you in the goddamn corridor. And those random chances are something you can't control. So, a lot of people say things like, oh, I got this on my first try. This was my third try. And even then, I panicked because I got really, really annoyed here. I went to press triangle on this, and he opened the door. Not what I wanted to do. Turns out, you have to open the door to make that swipeable. And I don't know why, but the bloater AI on this section just for some reason went into utter retard mode. And I could not be happier because it allowed me to to get rid of him. And then we're moving on to this sequence. Which... This is a nice section, this. It's a handful of dudes in an interesting environment and you can take them out pretty effectively. So something to note, there are pots and pans on the floor here. If you bump into them, you'll make noise. I don't think this is a mechanic they use hardly enough in this game. I think it's really cool and it balances out the stealth mechanics. However, you don't see it that often and that is a shame. Oh, and that's something I've not mentioned as well. If you grab a guy from behind like I just did then, you can carry him for a, a decent distance before knocking him out so that you don't knock him out in open view. The time you grab the fellas, I don't know if it's dictated by how big the gun you have pointing at their head is, but I think they are more susceptible to being moved when you have a gun than when you don't. Don't take that at 100% proof though because it's not something I've really tested. I'm not a person who moves the bodies that much. I just kind of get rid of dudes and then, you know, deal with the outcome. I'm sure somebody knows the, uh, the semantics of that mechanic and can probably fill you in on the comic section because there's a lot of people on YouTube that, that like to share that kind of information. But now there's only two fellas left. So we're just going to divide and conquer like we always do. Uh, I've been playing Dark Souls 1 today and it's the first time I've played it in a long time and I'm really feeling the benefit of having that break from it but I'm also feeling that interesting delicious contrast from Dark Souls 2. And the cool part about it is I'm seeing a lot of things that Dark Souls 2 did really well. I'm also seeing a lot of things that Dark Souls 1 did really well. And I wish the modding community was at such a point where people could change the fundamentals of games while keeping the overall package at a really high quality. Because I would love to be able to implement some of the changes that Dark Souls 2 did into Dark Souls 1. Because it would make it such a better game. Like, if I could take Dark Souls 2 in its entirety and import it into Dark Souls 1's engine so that it played like Dark Souls 1 but it was the Dark Souls 2 environment and assets and everything and weapons god I would have some goddamn fun that would be you know I would not need another game for a very long time because I've kind of fallen out with Dark Souls 2 and the things that make me fall out with it are the ways that it differs from Dark Souls 1 so that to me would be a dream project It'd kind of be, you know what they're doing with the Halo at this moment in time? Are they're, they're releasing Halo in like the Halo Reach engine, and now they're going back and doing those high definition remasters and fixing things, but keeping things the same and having it as the original multiplayer and mechanics and stuff. That kind of thing. I think that would be really cool. Or, conversely to that, the Metro Redux that they're doing. I'm not too sure the details of that, but it sounds like they're making the old games on the new engine and making them amazing, which. That is what I would love to do, <laughs> but the other way around, the, the, the new games on the old engine. Like, imagine Demon Souls mechanics in Dark Souls. How fucking weird would that be? But thank you very much for, for watching anyhow, guys. And as always, you take care now.